And now for something completely different. Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Myro and today we're going to do something completely different. And for the first time on this channel, we're going to do review and ranking of a proper metal band. Uh, and the band in question is one of the pioneers of death metal genre and one of the more influential bands in the 90s. And that, of course, is Death, formed in 1984 by guitarist Chuck Schuldiner, who unfortunately passed away in 2001, so we only get to hear seven studio albums by the band. And let me tell you, all of these records are pretty damn good, and I saw a bunch of lists online, and people have different opinions and uh, different rankings, and... Uh, that is completely normal for this band because they haven't released any bad studio album in my opinion everything is really good and excellent so without further ado let's get this started at number seven i have spiritual healing from 1990 uh, their third studio album it is my least favorite death record but it's still pretty damn good uh, compared to the first two albums, this one has more mature lyrics and is dealing with real-life horrors. And Chuck is discussing society and its problems, things like abortion, faith healing, etc. And also you can hear a change in their sound a bit. Chuck was experimenting with uh, song structure and songs are more meandering. Guitar riffs are slowed down a bit. Uh, they are more uh, doomish, like doom metal riffs but they still retain uh, fast pace and uh, um, fe ferocious riffs like on songs um, low life and defensive personalities which are great songs um, this is the only album to feature uh, james murphy on guitar uh, known for his work in metal bands like cancer obituary and testament and his more melodic style is felt throughout this record. Besides James, uh, we have uh, Terry Butler on bass and Bill Andrews on drums. Um, and interesting thing about that is they had constant lineup changes throughout their history with Chuck being the only constant from start to finish. Uh, and uh, yeah, a lot of people went through that in the 90s and um, this was, like I said, the only album to feature James Murphy on guitar. On next album, we have a different guitarist, and that tradition will continue until the end. Um, also, I have to mention that uh, this is the last uh, album cover artwork that was done by uh, Ed Ripka, who we, whose style I really appreciate. I really like uh, what he done with... Uh, album artworks for Death and Megadeth. Um, anyway, I digress. Uh, this album uh, was, in a way, a transitional record for the band. It is uh, a bridge between the old school uh, death metal and a more technical and progressive death metal, what's to come on uh, subsequent records after Spiritual Healing. Um, this Time around this time for the band was not maybe the best because they had some issues and I read that uh, uh, during the tour for this album uh, the band went on European tour without Chuck who was displeased with how everything was organized so they went ahead and went without him and with that to me is mind-blowing uh, soon after the that tour was completed uh, there was complete lineup change so only chuck left everybody else left and um, regarding this album uh, my main complaint i have is that the drumming is not the best here it is way too stiff and monotonous uh, but um, yeah and the songs are not as memorable as some of the other records uh, it still contains great songs like already mentioned low life and defensive personalities uh, then we have the title track which is also great and maybe my favorite track on this record and one of their better songs living monstrosity also great tune all in all this is a great record and 
this just shows how consistent their discography was not a single bad album and this one I have at four stars which says a lot so every album uh, from here is four stars and up there are no bad or m mediocre uh, uh, that record every album is good and uh, you can swap them around however you like and you will not make a big mistake to be honest so yeah spiritual healing at number seven at four stars at number six i have their final studio album the sound of perseverance from 1998 it may be a controversial pick but i don't think it is uh like i said this is their final studio album uh, as chuck unfortunately passed away in 2001 from cancer uh, the lyrics here are really strong, not your typical cheesy and melodramatic uh, lyrics that are often part of a lot of death metal bands. Um, they're more mature and more introspective. Um, and this album feels more prog metal than actual death metal. Um, I mean, the heaviness is still there, but uh, the guitars are brighter than usual and we have uh, Chuck screeching vocals here uh, that sounds different than on the previous than on previous records especially there's a big difference between how his vocal sounds on this album and for example the first two records uh, there are some great songs here uh, like Spirit Crusher, Flesh and the Power It Holds which may be the best song on this record and the longest song on the record uh, and of course, Scavenger of Human Sorrow. Uh, like I said, it, this album is more progier. Uh, there are more different odd time signature changes. Uh, we have even an acoustic song here, the first and the only acoustic track they ever did, and that is Voice of the Soul, um, which is an instrumental piece, one of the two instrumentals they uh, they ever did the first one being Cosmic Sea from album uh, from album Human, and uh, the funniest thing, uh, I think this is Death's most accessible record in a way. Uh, even for people who are not a fan of death metal, I think they would find this album interesting. Uh, I mean, you have to at least like metal music in order for you to enjoy it, but. Uh, uh, there are some nice riffs here and uh, great soloing throughout. It is not as ferocious and intense as their earlier stuff, like I said, but uh, it is still a fantastic album. Uh, you know, it is really engaging, and uh, unfortunately, it was their final studio album. And uh, I have this one at 4.5 stars already, so fantastic stuff. At number five, I have Human from 1991 and this was their fourth studio record released only a year after Spiritual Healing and uh, this album was is considered by many as one of the most influential metal albums in the 90s. Uh, this album marked a significant change in the band sounds and the song structure uh, became more complex and progressive compared to the previ previous three records. The lyrics are also more introspective as well and as we had on previous records this one also marks a different lineup for the band for the band and just look at the personnel on this record it's all-star musicians here we have Paul uh, Masvidal on guitars Sean Reinhardt both from Cynic and then we have Steve DiGiorgi on bass and uh, like I said this lineup is, you know, I don't know, they're all great musicians, especially Sean, uh, and his drumming uh, was amazing, and he did marvelous job on this record and on Cynic's albums as well, especially. Um, and I already complained on the spiritual healing that I did not, did not like the drums that much, uh, but uh, because it was really monotonous compared to the rest of the instrumentation well here everything changed Sean Reinhardt is a beast and he was only 20 at the time and Cynic just started as a band the sheer technicality here is amazing uh, the riffs and guitar playing is also tight with some great riffs throughout and um, 
maybe I'm being harsh by putting human uh, this low at number five. Uh, but what can I tell you? I prefer some of their other records more. And uh, still, I appreciate this record a lot. It is obvious, obviously clear why this album was so influential and ahead of its time. It set the blueprint for every other technical death metal band in the future. Uh, some highlights from this record are the opening track, Flattening of Emotions, Lack of Comprehensions, and Vacant Planets, the closing track. Like I previously mentioned, this album also contains one of the two instrumentals they ever did. Uh, Cosmic Sea uh, is on this record, and I think it's a great instrumental piece. And I don't know, this album is really good, but I, my problem with it is it kind of sounds samey a bit. Uh, and I prefer uh, some of the other albums more and I'm gonna talk about that one next. So this one is also at 4.5 star, great stuff. At number four, I have uh, Individual Thought Pattern from 1993. Uh, this is their fifth studio album uh, and uh, we have yet another lineup change here. On guitars, we have none other than Andy LaRocque from of King Diamond fame, uh, then we have, of course, Gene Hoagland on drums, another beast on drums, and this was the last album to feature Steve DiGiorgio on bass, and again, this is an all-star uh, lineup, and the reason I have this one above human is the production, uh, especially how the bass is mixed. Uh, it is way too loud, but it just works. I think it elevates the songs even more. And of course, Steve DiGiorgio is an amazing bass player. And uh, it's not overbearing or anything. It just fits perfectly, in my opinion. Uh, the music musicianship here is also immaculate and precise. This album feels more jazzier than anything compared to more one-dimensional sound of the predecessor. Uh, the drumming from Gene and guitar work by Andy are really felt here. Uh, the album, like I said, is more technical and even more proggier than the predecessor with tighter and a bit better songwriting as well. And in a way, uh, it's more melodic. The riffs are started to sound more melodic and um, they kind of set the blueprint a bit for uh, melodic death metal in the future as well. The Philosopher, uh, which is the closing track on this album, received uh, a significant uh, airplay on MTV, uh, for example, and uh, this song was my introduction to the band when I saw the video, I know how long ago, almost 20 years ago, and uh, I really love that song and I still love it. Uh, also, I have to point out how Mentally Blind kicks ass, amazing song. Uh, this album is kind of weird for me in a way that it kind of bounces off on my list. You know, every time I listen to it, I want to put it at number one, but uh, I don't know, things change a lot on this list. And it was my number one at some point, but uh, I just feel like I'm ranking these albums uh, in a way how um, how much often I listen to them. And uh, yeah, I currently it's number four, but I can definitely see I put this at number two or number one at some point. I think it's a fantastic album and it's a grower and, uh, you know, another great one, 4.5 stars. At number three, I have their debut record from 1987, Scream Bloody Gore. Maybe controversial, but I just freaking love this album. It is brutality, it is speed, it is heaviness. And you know what's interesting here? Chuck did everything, almost everything here. He played guitar, uh, bass guitar, did vocals, uh, produced the record, and uh, we had uh, Chris Ryford on drums. This album, like Human, was also extremely influential. It's considered as one of the first death metal records alongside Seven Churches by Possessed, which was released in 1985. And I love trash metal, and this album is a transition between trash and death metal. It is really fast and brutal at the same time. 
uh, the energy here is through the roof it is fun it is exciting and to be honest some of the later that stuff knows to be really really meandering and sometimes even boring and uh, this album is straight to the point no meandering here at all only fast riffs and catchy songs the riffs may be simple but they're still pack a punch uh, first couple of tracks here first six tracks here are all bangers they're in Tense as fuck, starting with Infernal Death, Zombie Ritual, Denial of Life, Sacrificial, Banger after Banger. You can clearly hear that this album was inspired by Slayer. Uh, it definitely set the blueprint for many death metal uh, bands in the future. The lyrics here are really evil, gory and violent. A lot of influence from horror movies and stuff. The lyrics definitely work for the album sound. And just look at that cover by Ed Ripka. It is amazing and iconic at the same time. Uh, Chris Reifert did his job here really good. I think uh, uh, he may be not the best drummer in the world, but oh boy, does he sound good here. The drum sound is brutal. Fantastic and influential debut in my opinion. And uh, I really do enjoy it. It is short and sweet. I have this one a strong 4.5 stars. Okay, two more to go. And this may be controversial again, but I don't care. Uh, this album is considered by many as their best record. It is critically acclaimed record. And yes, it is. But it's not my favorite death record. So I have that number at number two. And that is Sym Symbolic from 1995. My favorite of the prog era death. Uh, considered by many fans as their best. And another album and another lineup change. We have now Bobby uh, Kubli. Or however his last name is pronounced on guitar. Uh, Kelly Conlon on bass. And we have still Gene Hoagland on drums. The riffs here are borderline melodic, as we kind of saw on a uh, uh, previous record. They're even more melodic here. Uh, on this album, the songs are still intense, and there are a lot of time signature changes happening here. The songs are really engaging and never boring. This is the only album of this prog era that uh, doesn't have a boring part or boring moment. On any of the songs uh, it opens up with maybe their best song the title track symbolic symbolic and classic 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 track and we have also one of their my favorite death song and that is crystal mountain amazing stuff uh, the songs here like i said are more complex than on previous records they're more melodic and atmospheric as well there is not a single track here that is not memorable and the album is not that short it, it's over 15 minutes long uh, the songs are also longer and more progressive but like i said they're really engaging uh, and i have to say that uh, the guitar work here was amazing uh, uh, bobby has more of a he's a more of a jazz fusion player and that is felt throughout this record i think he added uh, much to the overall atmosphere and vibe of the of the album. Gene, of course, is still amazing here. Uh, the mix uh, on bass is not loud this time as it was on the previous record, and I cannot say about it much. But I'm not sure uh, that uh, that uh, Giorgio could be easily replaced. Uh, still, uh, this is a five star record for me and one of my favorite records from 1995. Uh, by far, I mean, like I said, the songs here are, you know, at least five minutes uh, long and I don't mind it one bit. I think everything works here. It is really good. It is produced really well and the overall musicianship is through the roof. Amazing stuff. Five stars. And that leaves us with one more record. Maybe unexpected for some, but... I don't care, I really, really love this album. And that is Leprosy, their second studio album from 1988. This album is an improvement over Scream Bloody Gore in every way. And this album contains some of my favorite death songs, like the title track, Pull the Plug, a classic death metal song, Choke on It, Open Casket and Left to Die. Banger after banger, it is 
you know every song here is great it is really heavy it is fast it is brutal the real the lyrics are still evil and visceral there are a lot of tempo changes that really makes the songs uh, much more interesting nothing is one-dimensional here the riffs are more complex than on Scream Bloody Gore much more interesting as well the drumming here is better than on Scream Bloody Gore uh, it is really cohesive record and strong from the beginning it is departure from more uh, trashier sound on, of Scream Bloody Gore it, this is pure death metal here and uh, the riffs here are crunching and dynamic uh, the bass is also really noticeable here as well the album is all killer no filler in my book every song here is great and memorable and also the album is really really catchy something that's definitely not a characteristic of a death metal album i mean there are some really catchy and uh, choruses even even though i really love progressive metal and especially progressive death metal uh, i mean opet is my favorite band but uh, with death i prefer their pure death metal sound I think Chuck wrote some great riffs and there are some great soloing here and um, this definitely belongs in top tier uh, death metal albums of all time uh, and that cover artwork once again is also iconic done, done by Ed it is really unique and um, you know it is iconic for a reason and I have this album of course at five stars and uh, I've I'll, I'll been listening to this album a lot in the last couple of years and it really 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 grew on me it wasn't my favorite it was near the bottom in the beginning but it as the more and more I listen to it 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 I think it belongs on on this spot since this is the album that I come to the most when I want to listen to that two albums I always grab are leprosy and scream bloody gore i don't know i mean i have scream bloody gore at three uh at number three but uh i listened to those two albums more than any other that record uh both amazing and especially leprosy um it is an important album in uh, extreme metal and death metal genre in general and it's really influential as well so yes this will be my rankings of death studio albums so if you have your own rankings please do leave them in the comments down below you can like this video if you like it share it whatever you like all of that youtube stuff and uh, thanks to you again for watching and we'll see you in the next one